Noam Chomsky, radical advisor to U.S. imperialism. Failed anarchist on failed states. 4 August 2006. Boston. On June 6th, members of the Spartacus League, Spartacus Youth Club, attended a Harvard store-sponsored forum in Cambridge featuring Noam Chomsky as one of two panelists. Chomsky was there to promote his new book, Failed States, The Abuse of Power and the Assault on Democracy. Chomsky's exposure of some of the crimes of U.S. imperialism can open students' eyes to what the U.S. really does internationally but the esteemed professor then feeds them the lie that this can be changed through the promotion of pure democracy with the help of the UN and international law. An SLSYC speaker at the forum challenged Chomsky. Basically, what I see you're doing, as the title of your book says, is basically, as you have done historically, build faith in this mythical bird called pure democracy. The fact of the matter is that democracy has a class basis. This is what capitalist democracy looks like. It's Lindy England with a naked, tortured Iraqi on the end of a leash. It's the racist frame-up of Mumia Abu-Jamal, who faces the very real threat of execution now. For all of your criticism of the Democrats, whose hands are dripping in blood, you called people in the last election to vote for the Democratic Party. Unlike Noam Chomsky, we understand that under capitalism, democracy serves as a mask for a system of exploitation, oppression, and state repression. Under its facade of government of the people, by the people, and for the people, the U.S. capitalist state is a violent terror machine for the defense of the capitalist class profit system, a system based on private ownership of the means of production and the concentration of vast amounts of wealth created by the labor of the working class masses in the hands of a tiny exploiting minority. The capitalist state's cops, courts, and prisons exist to prevent working people, and in the U.S. particularly, the specially oppressed black masses from fundamentally cha challenging the racist, oppressive capitalist order. Capitalist democracy is in reality the dictatorship of the capitalist class over the working class and oppressed. It is only through proletarian revolution and the establishment of the dictatorship of the working class that the basis can be laid for creating an egalitarian socialist society where production is based on human need and not profit. Democracy for working people can only become a reality by ripping the means of production out of the hands of the capitalist exploiters and replacing their state with a state for the defense of the interest of workers and the oppressed as a transition to a classless, stateless communist society. Far from wanting to smash capitalist states, armchair anarchist Chomsky wants to rescue these from failure. According to Chomsky's book, the salient features of a, quote, failed state, end quote, such as the U.S. includes what he calls the, quote, democratic deficit, end quote, or the, quote, sharp divide between public opinion and public policy, end quote. Once again, Chomsky arrives with the earth-shattering news flash, the capitalist rulers don't govern based on the interest of the working class and the oppressed. But that won't stop him from promoting the virtues of U.S. capitalist democracy. Quote, the United States was the first modern, more or less, democratic society and has been a model for others ever since. And in many dim dimensions crucial for authentic democracy, protection of freedom of speech, for example, it has become a leader among the societies of the world. End quote. Chomsky's regard for U.S. capitalist democracy is superseded only by his regard for the UN Charter and the, quote, sacred, end quote, international law that he makes impotent appeals for the U.S. to respect. Behind the anarchists' purported rejection of all states, including the dictatorship of the working class, is a program that in practice upholds the capitalist state. Yet Chomsky fails to even pretend he is for the destruction of capitalism openly 
counseling the imperialist rulers to democratize their system. In, this, in his virulent anti-communism, typical of anarchists, places him squarely in the camp of the bloody imperialist powers that he purports to criticize. Thus, it follows that Chomsky's idea of, quote, free speech, end quote, at his own event, means telling the communists to shut up and ask their question, as he did at the Harvard Forum on June 6th. This prompted another SLSYC member in the crowd to tell Chomsky to, to quote, stop manufacturing consent, end quote. It's Canada's fault. In response to a question from the floor regarding the recent immigration debate in the U.S., Chomsky gave the usual endless speech of a rambling, pompous professor saying everything while saying nothing. But suddenly we sat up in our seats as a specter of South Park entered the hall. Quote, we need to form a full assault. It's Canada's fault, Chomsky said. Quote, there was a 9-11 commission set up, a government commission to recommend a means to produce a threat barrier to the United States. It was set up over strong opposition by the Bush administration, for which it carries a very low priority, and they didn't want it. As they pointed out that the great, greatest threat of terror, one that of the greatest infiltration across the border, namely the Canadian border, the long unguarded border reaching, reaching across, and that they said, you've got to do something about infiltration from the Canadian border. What has the administration done? Well, first the Bush administration since 9-11 reduced the border control altogether, reduced the growth of border patrol, the really long length of the border. But they don't care. The Canadian border is left unguarded, the one that's considered the most dangerous. Emphasis his. Chomsky is now calling on the racist, rapacious American ruling class and its murderous state to save us from the evil clutches of Canadians? That's right. This radical imposter has joined the chorus of hysterical town people of South Park with their with all the beady little eyes and flapping heads so full of lies, blame Canada, blame Canada. But unlike the creators of South Park, Noam Chomsky wasn't joking. Chomsky's comments about the Canadian border were made just a few days after Canadian police carried out anti-terror raids, resulting in the arrests of 17 Muslim men. A central and recurring complaint in Chomsky's latest book is that members of the Bush administration, quote, do not consider terrorism a high priority, end quote. Chomsky echoes the Democratic Party liberals who complain that Bush is giving low priority to fighting terrorism and who consider the U.S. war and occupation of Iraq as a distraction from the, quote, war on terror, end quote. Chomsky complains, quote, Preventing terrorist attacks is simply not a high priority in comparison with serious geopolitical and strategic objectives, specifically controlling the world's major energy resources, end quote. It is grotesque that Chomsky posits that the biggest terrorists on the planet, the U.S. imperialist rulers, who also attack the livelihoods of working people at home, could be in the business of, quote, protecting anyone but themselves and their profit system. The racist atrocity that took place in New Orleans around Hurricane Katrina is proof on its own of the murderous contempt the capitalist rulers have for black, working, and poor people in this country. The so-called war on terror is in reality a cover for imperialist slaughter abroad and for war on the rights of labor, immigrants, black people, and leftists at home. For all of Chomsky's concern about the assault on democracy, in the U.S., his recent book doesn't even reference the Patriot Act or comment on the wholesale shredding of the democratic rights of the U.S. population under the rubric of the War on Terror. While Chomsky complains about the unguarded Canadian border, the Canadian capitalist rulers have in fact followed the U.S.'s lead in using purported War on Terror to vastly restrict the rights of the population as a whole as have other democratic capitalist governments around the world. These restrictions are aimed at repressing working class and social struggle, which will always represent the biggest threat 
to the capitalist rulers.